As part of the Spring Into Storytime uh, series of books, I do like to highlight the fact that there are um, books that are for slightly older readers and have loads of images in them as well. And this book here by um, Oshie McGann, who's a brilliant um, illustrator and writer, uh, does a series of books for younger readers called Mad Grandad. Um, and this one's about Mad Grandad and the Robot Garden. And uh, it is published by the brilliant publisher O'Brien Press. And there is another one in this series called uh, Mad Grandad and the Flying Saucer. So this says here, another Mad Grandad adventure. So there are more. Anyway, so I would like to try and do my best and give, do it justice, hopefully. And there's an image of Oshin there and all about him there. So he started making up stories when he was about six years old. And this is a great story for anyone who would like to listen. So, we'll give it a go. Chapter 1. Grandad's Mad Garden. It was Saturday morning and I was helping Grandad clear up his garden. Grandad was a bit mad. He spent hours looking at things that weren't really there or arguing with the radio. So he didn't have much time to look after the garden. I cut back some bushes and found a headlight. Grandad! I called. I found... Your car. So you did, Lenny, he said, coming over. I wonder where that got to. We all wondered there where that got to. We all cut the bushes away, and there sat his old car, which had gone missing a few years ago. It had not been missing at all. It was right where he left it. Well, I'm going to have to take better care of this garden, he said. i lose the house in it soon. You need to get a gardener or something, I said. Yes, I do, he nodded. Then his eyes opened wide and he slapped his head. Wang's garden centre. Holy smoke, Lenny, he said. My brother Rupert sent me a gardener from Japan. I forgot all about it. Chapter 2. The Robo Gardener 3000. Now, as I said, Grandad was a bit mad, but he did have a brother named Rupert my great uncle, and Rupert spent his time sailing all around the world. He often sent weird stuff back to Grandad, but when Grandad said he had sent a gardener, I thought he was making things up again. Love the illustrations. He took me into the house and down to the cellar. The place was crammed with all sorts of stuff. Under a load of boxes, there was a package from Rupert. It had stamps all over it. And a note from great uncle Rupert attached to it. It said, Hello from Japan. Here's something to clear up your garden. Don't forget. Don't let it have any nuts. Rupert. We opened the box here and there was a robot folded inside. Wow, I gasped. That's cool. I wonder why he says not to give it nuts. Don't know, Grandad said. But then Rupert's always been the mad one in the family. I unfolded a robot. It had Robo Gardener 3000 written on his back. I think it needs batteries, I said. Grandad found some batteries, and we put them in the robot's back. Then I turned it on. Its eyes lit up, and it stood up. It spun around and rolled out the door. We went outside and stopped and stared. It was already hard at work cleaning up the garden. It had all sorts of gadgets, and soon it had cleared up all the leaves and was mowing the grass. Wow, I said. After it mowed the grass, it cut all the bushes into different shapes, like animals and birds. It clipped the hedge to make it look like a castle wall. Holy smoke, said Grandad after it finished with the bushes and the hedge. It pulled up all the weeds and in the flower bed and watered the flowers. This is the best thing I've ever seen, I said. We watched for another hour as it worked. Then, when it was finished, it cleaned itself up, rolled into the garden shed and turned itself off. Grandad wiped a tear from his eyes. It's beautiful. He said. We had a picnic out in the garden instead of dinner, looking around at the wonderful shapes and colours. When it got dark, we went in and watched some telly. Mum and Dad were away for the weekend, so I stayed in the spare room for the night. Yawn. A noise woke me in the middle of the night, and there was something moving out in the garden. I popped out the window, and the robot was moving around, doing things in the flower beds. I put on my trainers and sneaked downstairs. I quietly opened the back door and looked out. 
The robot gardener, hi granddad's tool box open, and was planting something in the flower beds. I moved closer and saw it was planting nuts and bolts in the flower beds. Then it was squirting oil on them. When I walked out to it, it looked around quickly and turned itself off. I didn't know what to think, so I put the robot and the toolbox back in the shed. Just to be safe, I locked the door. Chapter 4. Nuts, Bulls and Robot Daisies The next morning, I woke up and saw Grandad hanging out in the garden. I put on my clothes and ran downstairs. Outside, Grandad was scratching his head. What's up, Grandad? I asked. Look, Lenny, he said. All the flowers are gone. He was right. All the flowers in the flower beds were gone instead bits of metal were sticking up out of the ground as we watched one of them opened and spread into a metal flower holy smoke granddad squeaked a metal flower they're all opening up i said one by one all the bits of the metal all the bits of metal opened into flowers there were small ones like daisies and pansies and big ones like roses there were even ones that grew into bushes that's what it was doing last night i gasped it was planting its own garden a robot garden i told granddad about what i'd seen in the night and rupert said not to let it have nuts granddad slapped his head he meant nuts and pulse not tree nuts well now i have a metal garden i suppose it could be worse suddenly one of the metal daisies pulled itself out of the ground and ran across the grass into the shed it unlocked the door and Robo Gardener rolled out. More of the metal plants jumped out of the ground and started running around. I don't think gardens are supposed to do this, Grandad, I said. A metal rosebush ran up to us and hit my legs. Ow! I cried. It's got thorns! Ouch! shouted Grandad as another rosebush bumped into him. More rosebushes crowded around and pushed us towards the shed. Grandad, they're trying they're going to lock us in the shed, I said. We fought back, but the bushes used their thorns and they hurt a lot. We ran into the shed and the door slammed shut behind us. We heard the lock snap shut. Chapter five Fighting the Flowers We're trapped, Grandad said. <laughs> I looked around Apologies. This is where I messed up. I'm going to start again. We're trapped, Grandad said. I looked through the window. They're planting no more nuts and bolts, I said, biting my lip. There's going to be thousands of them. They could keep... They could take over the world if this keeps going. We have to get out of here. But how do we get past the rose bushes? Da, 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 they look evil. I have an idea. Grandad looked towards the back of the shed. There lay all the gardening tools. Grandad started up the old lawnmower, and I grabbed a pair of shears. Right, Lenny, let's do some gardening, said Grandad. He smashed the lawnmower through the door. It ran over the rose bushes outside, chewing them up and spitting them out. I followed, clipping the heads off the ones that were left. We charged out into the garden, but every time we cut one down, another one popped up in its place. There's too many of them, Grandad cried. Then I had another idea. We need more crunching power, Grandad. Does your car still work? I asked. Grandad gave me a look. Great idea, he said. We cut our way through the bushes towards the car and jumped in. Grandad pulled out his big bunch of keys and found the right one. The car started with a belch and a growl. Grandad drove towards and f- forwards and flattened all the metal plants in front of us. Then he drove backwards and flattened all the plants behind us. That's pretty cool. E equals MC squared. Then he drove around the garden in circles until every metal plant was lying flat and broken in pieces. Chapter 6. Return of the Robot. There was only the robot left. It stood against the garden wall staring at us with its little steel and glass eyes. Granted, revved the engine, but the robot suddenly turned and grabbed the handle of a rake and used it to vault over the wall. He's getting away! Grandad yelled. I jumped out of the car and scrambled over the wall. Grandad couldn't climb over it, so he ran down the alley and out the gate instead. In the next garden, the robot was making for the back wall. It tried to leap up and grab the top, but it missed and slid down into a blackberry bush. 
It got all tangled up, and before it could cut its way out, I jumped. Grandad, quick! I called out as the robot fought to get free. Grandad came through the gate, but I had to stop for a few seconds to catch his breath. The robot started to crawl out of the bush. Da, 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 da. Grandad was too out of breath to grab it, so he sat on its head instead. I pulled the batteries out of its back and I went still. Let's send it back to Japan, said Grandad. We folded it up, put it back in its box and wrote on top, This robot wants to take over the world. Please return to factory. Then we took it to the post office and posted it. When we got back to Grandad's house, we looked at the garden. It was a mess. What are you going to do now? I asked him. I'm going to get rid of all this metal stuff, he said. Then I'm going to leave the rest. I've decided having a messy garden isn't so bad after all. He went quiet for a second. Then he said, but this time, I'm going to remember where I left the car. You never know when we might need it again. <gasps> there they are, safe and sound. But what's that? My granddad. Brilliant. I hope. I didn't make too many mistakes. But the book, Lachine, the story, illustrations, are brilliant. Bye bye.